You may call your next witness. They call us Gypsy Willis. Your name for the record. Yes. My name is Gypsy Willis, uh, G-Y-P-S-Y-W-I-L-L-I-S. -I -I Have you gone by any other names? Uh, yes. I was married for a time. Um, my last name was Jensen, J-E-N-S-E-N. -E Have you gone by other names as well? I was going by Jillian McNeil. And you are here on a subpoena. I am. And it's, is it true that you're required to, uh, pursuant to a plea agreement to testify in this matters and other matters relating to the I defendant? Think, I think I'm required to um, testify in all matters. And in exchange for your testimony, you were given no jail on another case? That's correct. And in that case, you were convicted of felonies? Yes. And have you been interviewed by law enforcement in relation to this case? I have. On how many occasions? Um, two, I believe. It was in March in, of uh, 2009 and again in October of 2010. Did you previously testify at a preliminary hearing in this matter? I did. Do you recognize the defendant sitting right here? I do. And who is that? It's Martin McNeil. Ask the court now the record reflects she's identified the defendant. We'll stipulate your name. Stipulations accepted. Go ahead. How do you know the defendant? We were involved a number of years ago. In a relationship? Yes. When did the two of you meet? In 2005, November. And how did you meet? We met online. Online chatting? I, I was, um, I had an interest board where I posted things I was interested in. It was Instant Messenger. He replied to one of the subjects I posted. Now you have previously stated a couple different versions of how the two of you met. Is that correct? That is correct. And are those versions in fact true? What I just said about meeting online is true. So that's the truth that you guys met online? Yes. Um, what, what chat username did you use? Um, I think my email was Phoenix Sheba or something like that. At which? Uh, at hotmail.com. Or, sorry, uh, Yahoo. Phoenix Sheba at Yahoo.com? Yes. Did you use any other e email addresses at this time to communicate? I think also maybe Lucid Sphinx at, at Yahoo. Was it the Lucid Sphinx at Hotmail? No, I, I'm sorry. I've, I've recently gone to Hotmail, that's so why I keep saying that. Okay. It's Yahoo. Um, so the two of you met in the fall of 2005. Correct. And you, you've you told people previously that your relationship evolved. It did. Um, were the two of you communicating in any other way besides online? Uh, uh, by my cell phone. His, I, I remember text messaging. Um, I remember getting calls from his uh, work number. Possibly on his cell phone as well. It's been a, it's been a very long time. I understand. Sorry. Uh, when did the two of you first meet in person? In person, it was just before Thanksgiving of 2005. And how do you remember that? I had I had sold my house previously, moved to an apartment that um, September, I think. Um, so all these things are kind of happening at the same yeah, time. Yeah, same helps kind of you. thing. Yeah. Okay. It was shortly after moving to the apartment, uh, North Salt Lake Bountiful area. Okay. Did the relationship become sexual? It did. And when was that? I think that was in January of 2006. And how often were the two of you having sexual relations? We would see each other about a couple times a month. There were months when we didn't see each other. It was a very casual thing. It's just whenever we had time and it could be arranged. Okay. And it was... Go ahead. I, I think we probably had sex half the time. I mean, sometimes it was just lunch. Did the relationship become more serious in the spring of 2007? I don't believe so. Um, I had uh, gotten into a nursing program. Well, it, I'd gotten into a nursing program in 2006, and I had to jump in without a lot of financial preparation. So I was... Um, I was kind of couch surfing, staying with friends at that time. And then um, in the spring of 2007, 
Martin mentioned that he had a property that he had a lease on and that I was welcome to go there if I wanted to. But I was in the middle of a nursing program. It was very, very intensive. So we, we communicated more in just being closer to him. We had more visits, but I, I would not say that it changed other than that. So in March of 2007, you move into a duplex in Lehigh? That's correct. You're closer to the defendant? Yes. And who's paying for this duplex? Martin already had a contract on that property. So he's paying for the housing there? Yes. And did he give you a debit card to use for personal expenses? Yes. And you could use that as you needed to? Correct. And uh, you were in a, in a nursing program at this time? I was. And who was paying for that? I had financial aid for that. Did and he help assist on that? I, I think he helped a little. It was, it was an open-ended loan until I was done with school, basically. Okay, but... But he was not the prime person paying for it. But he was assisting you with paying for your schooling? He, he was assisting me with what I needed until I was out of school. And when you're living in Lehigh, are the two of you having sex more? Yes. Um, prior to March, were you dating only him? No. Around March, were you only dating him? Um, I was still seeing other people. Um, I, I was very busy, and so the fact I was seeing him a little more, I didn't see as many other people. Did you go with him to the Mayo Clinic in Arizona? I did. And when was that? That was in February of 2007. And what happened when you went to the Mayo Clinic? He was being tested for, uh, for some conditions related to his health. Did you stop in Las Vegas on your way? We did. And where did you stop? Um, we stopped in Las Vegas, and he um, had me wait at a restaurant while he went to visit his daughter, Alexis. And then I um, got together with friends after and stayed the night there, and then we continued on the next day. So you stayed the night with friends? Yes. Did he tell you where he stayed? He said he stayed with Alexis. Did he tell you why? Uh, he said that that um, she had found some things in the car and she was very upset and he was just going to go spend the night with her. Okay. Things are, are a broad term. What kinds of things? Clothes, makeup maybe, something like that. Is it fair to say that previously you've said she saw luggage? Luggage. And is it fair to say that you also said that the defendant had told you that Michelle had called and was concerned? He told me that she had called and just asked him where he was, and he kind of said, what, what is this about? And then Alexis was very upset, and so he went to stay with her. And as a result of that, you stayed with friends, and he stayed with Alexis? Yes. So in March, um, you're texting and calling more. You move to Lehigh that he's providing you housing for. He gives you a credit card. He's helping with schooling. This sounds like a commitment. Yeah, he's helping. Do you remember emailing a potential suitor in March of 2007? Um, vaguely, yeah. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? You may. And may I be free to approach as needed? Please. States Exhibit 39. Will you Thank you? Look at that. Okay. Do you recognize that? I do. What is it? Um, it is a letter that I wrote um, in response to um, uh, a guy that was asking me on a date. Okay. And in that letter, you said, a very good and best friend of mine has recently become much more than that. That's correct. What was the date of this email? March 6th. Of what year? Uh, I'm sorry, 2007. Okay, so on March 6th of 2007, you emailed another suitor and said, 
a good and best friend has become much more than that. And because of that, it would be inappropriate for the two of you to meet. Correct. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked States Exhibit 40. Can you look at that? Let me ask you, do, can, do you recognize that? I do. And what is that? Uh, this was a, a letter in response to the letter he wrote me after the one I sent him. What we might call a follow-up yes, email. Yes, a follow-up email. And in this, or what date was this one written on? This was on Tuesday, um, the 13th of March, 2007. So a week later. Yes. And you said, and in response to your question, how it happened, I met him online a year and a half ago. We've always been great together. And then you went on to say, and just recently, his reasoning and views changed, and we are together now. Is that fair to say? That's what I wrote. Okay. Move to offer these two exhibits, Your Honor. I'll object, Your Honor. I think it's here saying she's testified about the content of them. That's appropriate. That is, what's your response to that? My response is these are documentation of an increase in their relationship. Well, the objections here say... They're out-of-court statements of this witness offered for their truth. Is there an exception? Um, I would say that they fall under the um, recorded recollection. Uh, I don't know that she ever expressed she had no recollection. I'll reserve on it. Will you just note that I've reserved on 39 and 40? Thank you. Um, at the time, at this time, and I'm, I'm talking March and April of 2007. Okay. Um, what, was, what was the phone number you had at this time? 801. Okay, and what was, you said that you had communicated with the defendant in two different ways. One was a cell phone and one was a work phone. Do you remember those numbers? I don't remember them from memory, no. Could I ask you if you're familiar with a couple numbers? Yes. One is 319. That was a cell number. Okay. The other is seven. I believe that was the work number. While you're marking those. I think I'd just like to rule on 39 and 40. Sustained as to, uh, I think, the hearsay, but I think she testified that the relationship hadn't changed at all in the spring. Their prior uh, inconsistent statements, extrinsic evidence of them is admissible so long as she is given an opportunity to examine uh, and explain or deny the statement. The adverse party is given an opportunity to see the documents and examine as well. I'll receive them. You may. Ms. Willis, I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibits 41 and 42. And before doing this, I believe we have a stipulation as to phone records, so I move to offer them. Any objection? No objection. States Exhibits 41 and 42 are received. I'm just going to explain these briefly to you, okay? okay. This is the defendant's telephone records for outgoing calls from the Utah State Developmental Center phone. Okay. This is the date and time. This is the number that's being called. Okay. What number on the exhibit? And that's number 41. Okay. 
okay. number 42 is the phone records for the defendant's cellular phone. It has phone calls in this section, and I've tabbed it here. This is where text messages begin. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to run through a little exercise with you using these records. I want to go to March 29th. If you look at March 29th in the Utah State Developmental Center um, re uh, records. Okay. It appears that the defendant called you one time. Is that correct? Um, let's see, 29th. Yes. And then on April 1st, uh, there were no calls from this number to you. Just a moment. March 30th. Correct. And then April 2nd, there were three calls to you. Um, okay. And these are your, these, this is your phone number, 671578. Um, April 3rd, there were no calls, as I read that. Okay. Um, April, April 4th, I see two calls. Yes. April 5th, I see one call. I don't think I see April 5th. Okay. You can but tell me if you don't see it. I, I don't believe I see April 5th. Um, and then April 6th, I see six phone calls. I believe you're right. April 8th, I see one call. Yes. April 9th, I see three calls. Ninth. Um, sorry, just a moment. I, be, uh, I think I see one. Okay. But I, no, I think you're right. I think I see three. Okay. April 10th, I see one call. Sorry, there are a lot of numbers here. There are. Okay. Uh, April 11th, I see two calls in the morning. 11th. And then, just a moment. Okay, that's correct. Okay, and what times are the calls at April 11th on? I see one at 6.48 in the morning and one at 9.26 in the p.m. Are you familiar with what happened on April 11th of 2007? A little, yeah. Okay, what happened on that day? I understand that um, Martin's wife was found collapsed. He, res he tried to resuscitate her. She was taken to the hospital, coded, and then passed away. Um, April 13th, I see one call. Yes. What time was that at? 13th, uh, 10.20 p.m. So April 13th, which I understand to be a Friday, the defendant called you at 10.20 p.m. from the developmental center phone. Is that fair believe, to say? I believe so. Okay. Let's go to the other exhibit, if you would, with me. And admittedly, this is going to be a lot more accounting. Um, but would you turn to that text section and go to March 29th? back apparently I missed this um, on the US Developmental Center um, on April 11th you put you said two times that the defendant called you would you repeat those just a moment April 11th. I see a call at 648 a.m. and I see one at 926 p.m. on April 11th I approach. yes Are you familiar with uh, military time? Yes. What does that appear to say? Oh, I'm sorry. 9.26 a.m. Okay. I apologize. So that was 9.26 a.m. 
Okay, are we to the text on March 29th? 29th, okay. Fair to say that you and the defendant text messaged approximately 38 times that day? I, uh, approximately. There's a lot of text. There's a lot of text. Um, April 1st, six texts between the two of you? I'm sorry, you said April 1st? Yes. Yes. April 2nd, 10 texts. Approximately. April 3rd, around 24 texts. I would say approximately so. Um, April 4th, approximately 17 texts. Mm. April 4th? Correct. Maybe let's start another page, just a moment. Sorry. Just trying to get a general idea. Oh, okay, approximately. Approximately 17. And two of these texts came after 10.45 p.m., correct? Yes. And on the morning of April 5th, there were 16 text messages between the two of you between midnight and 10 a.m. on April 5th. Okay. Is that what it looks like? Do you want me to count them? <laughs> it looked like a lot of texts between that time period. Uh, yeah, it looks like a good handful or two. Okay. I want to go to April 11th of 2007. Okay. Approximately 30 texts. Okay, are you multiplying by two each one of these entries? No, I, total between the two of you. Okay, well, I see a, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I approach? Yes. Um, April 12th, how many do you see there? You're going to make me count all of these. Um, I see 12. Okay, do you see a different delineation for certain kinds of texts on that time, at that time? I see, like, incoming Okay. Uh, incoming or maybe the city it was sent from or something like that. Okay. Could I see that real quick? Yes. Can you see what this says right here? Picture. And so what does that mean? I guess that's a picture. Okay, I... so there were picture texts that you sent to the defendant on April. I guess. Do you recall those? I don't. It's been a very long time. Let's go to April 14th. Just a moment. Okay. How many texts are on April 14th? Are you, are you saying only from my number, or am I adding up all of them of that it's day? Because you and the defendant. Oh, I I, I'm sorry. Okay, 14th. In the neighborhood of like 
22, I think. I, I may have missed one. I kept counting after a while. Okay, so there's Sorry. 10 through so Texas <laughs> yes. texts uh, on the day of April 14th. Are you familiar with what was happening on April 14th? I believe that was the day of his wife's funeral. And did you attend that funeral? I did. Do you remember what time that funeral went on from? I... Um... I, I think it was in the neighborhood of like 10 or 11 noon. I, I don't remember. It seemed like it was in the later morning. Okay. And you sent him four texts between 9 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. on April 14th. I'm sorry. This is an important day. I'm trying to get my information correct. I see two incoming texts in the hour of 9, and then two incoming texts in the hour of 12. What times on the 12? 12, 13, 12, 21. Okay, and those were from your phone? The 6, uh, yes. Seven, one number, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, is it fair to say that during the months of March and April that the two of you would communicate by a voice, on the, on the developmental center phone, and if it was from his cell phone, that it would be by text only? I probably, yeah. And why would that be the case? Why would that be the case? Why would he not call you from his cell phone? You know, this was, this was a very informal, in, um, discreet thing. We were not interested in other people knowing. Okay. I think he was trying to uh, keep it quiet. I respected that. But on April 14th, the day of Michelle's funeral, he, in fact, called you from his cell phone for the first time, right, in a couple of months? Uh, sorry, I think I need to flip my papers around here. I, my recollection, I, it's been a very long time. You can, um, you can look. It's <laughs> easy to find. Okay. I'm not sure if this shows incoming or outgoing, but I do see a number that was dialed. I want my number dialed. Your number was dialed from uh -huh. Okay. I can take those from you. Okay. That would come as a surprise. That was not my favorite subject. Um, you attended the funeral, you said? I did. Did you speak to the defendant at the funeral? I spoke to him briefly a after and just said, I hope you're all right, and if there's anything I can do, please let me know. So this was like the luncheon thing? I didn't go to the luncheon. It was, it was immediately it was after. immediately after you approached him and, and offered said, condolences. Yes, and then left. I want to go to... Um, some of the conversations that you had with the defendant or overheard prior to um, the day of Michelle's death. Do you remember making a statement about high blood pressure? Do, do I remember ma making a statement about high blood pressure? About hearing the defendant say something about high blood pressure? Yeah, well, yes. Um, Could I, you tell us that? I overheard a conversation where um, I think Michelle had called him, and um, she had stopped and gotten her blood pressure checked, and it was quite high, and he said, you've got to get that under control if you're going to have this surgery. Okay. Um, did the defendant tell you about the day that Michelle passed away? A little, yeah. And what did he tell you? He told me that um, there was a health fair going on at his developmental center. Um, he told me that uh, he had picked up the, um, his youngest from school and had uh, gotten to the house and um, found Michelle in the bathtub. Um, did he tell you how she was dressed? He did. I, I think she was. I think I don't remember when. When just I didn't. I didn't uh, chase him for details, but I believe she was partially dressed. Did he tell you that he thought Michelle had a low pain threshold? Yes. 
Did he tell you about calling Alexis that same morning concerned about Michelle? Yes. What did he tell you regarding that? Just that um, she wasn't, I think, I think Michelle wasn't listening to what he was saying or she was trying to do some, do too much activity, just that she was restless. I, my recollection is that um, he wanted her to call and just check to make sure that she was resting. I want to move on to the next week. Do you remember going to the temple uh, to meet Rachel? I, I remember going to meet Rachel. Um, the exact dates escaped me. I'm sorry. Okay. And um, what were you supposed to do when you went to the temple? I was supposed to um, walk up and introduce myself and um, maybe strike up a small conversation and, and leave. Okay. It's just an introduction. Did you, um, did you dress like you were going to be attending the temple? I dressed in a dress. It's, it was appropriate for the circumstance. And when you came up, what did the defendant say? Um, he just said, hello, and, you know, what was your name? He asked you what Something your name like was. Something like that. And what did you say? I told him my name was Jillian. Okay. We'd met before, I believe. And did you say how the two of you had met? I don't remember. And then what did he do? Uh, he introduced me to Rachel. Um, did he leave while you were talking with Rachel? I don't think so. They were sitting on a bench outside. I, I don't think he left. Did he ask you for your name a second time? I don't recall. I don't recall. Did he ask you for your phone number? I, I don't really remember that either. Any reason he wouldn't know your phone number at this point? No, it was it was more of an introduction to his family. Okay, so he staged and directed this encounter. I don't understand the the terminology there, but um, he would he wanted me to meet his family on the best possible terms. He felt very badly that they I'm might think. Stop you there. Sorry. I'm not, okay. I'm not asking for what he thought at this point. Do you remember speaking with Doug Whitney on April second of two thousand and nine? Um. I thought it was. I thought when I spoke to Whitney, it was. Oh, I apologize. March. You're correct. March third of two thousand nine. Okay. It's when he wrote the report. Yes. Okay. In this transcript, DW stands for Doug Whitney, and GW stands for you. Yes. Will you read this highlighted portion? Um, Doug Whitney is saying, "Okay, so he staged and directed it," and I agreed. Yeah. Okay, so on that occasion, you agreed that the defendant had staged and directed the temple visit. It, it seems, I didn't understand the import, but okay. I agreed to what he was saying. I mean... So the two of you had talked about what was going to happen before it took place? Briefly, yeah. And um, you had talked about part of this was to, to bring you into the home as the nanny. My recollection at this point is that it was to meet the family on better, you know, to, to have an introduction. Soon after this, you uh, attended a nanny interview, correct? Yes. Who conducted that interview? It was at the McNeil House. Um, I guess Martin conducted it. The, the children were there. I think everyone was there except Alexis, perhaps. Okay, and who interviewed you? Um, I think Martin was asking me questions, and I just kind of introduced myself and told them a little bit about my life and background. Do you remember who was was Damien there? Yes. Was Eileen, his girlfriend, there? Yes, I believe so. Was Vanessa there? Yes. Was there any question you were going to be hired as the nanny? I don't believe that Martin would have had me come and help if his children had objected strongly to me. That's speculation. I'm going to move, I'm moving to strike that answer, Your Honor. Uh, I, th I think it was responsive. You said, is that, was there any question? And she thought there was. It, Ms. Willis, I want to follow up on a couple of things we talked about on Friday. Yes. Uh, on Friday, you stated that in or around February or March of 2007, 
the defendant moved you into a duplex in Lehigh and that he gave you a debit card for to use for what you needed or wanted and he helped pay for your schooling and the two of you were having sex more, correct? Yes. And I asked you, isn't this demonstrating a commitment or a more serious relationship? And you replied something to the effect of, no, it was casual or something like that. Is that correct? That's correct. And then I showed you uh, permission to move toward the bench until the ward witness is needed, Your Honor. Yep, go ahead. And then I showed you States Exhibits 39 and 40, which were emails that you had sent to someone that you'd met online somehow. And in these you had said, a very good and best friend of mine has recently become much more than that, and followed up in response to how that happened. I met him online a year and a half ago. We've always been great together, and just recently his reasoning and views changed, and we are together now. What relationship are you talking about in Exhibits 39 and 40? I was referring to Martin. Okay. I want to go um, back to around the time of Michelle McNeil's death. Um, in April of 2007, do you remember taking pictures of yourself? I, I took pictures of myself whenever I thought I looked okay, yeah. Do you remember the specific content? Well, let me go back and strike that. Um, we went through phone records, and in those phone records, there was a number of picture messages that you sent to the defendant, correct? Yes. Do you remember the content of those picture messages? Just general ideas, maybe. Let's have you look at this. Will you look at each page of that and tell me if you recognize those? Yes, I do. And what are those? Those are photos of me. And are those pictures you took? Yes. And are these pictures that you would have sent to the defendant? I believe so. Okay. Um, these have dates on them, and I want to ask you about a few in particular, okay? On the right. first page, what are these pictures showing? Me lying down on a pillow. Okay. And what was the date that these were created? Um... Created date 4-12. Of what year? Of, I'm sorry, 2007. Okay, so these were taken the day after Michelle McNeil's death. 4-12, uh, yes. And around this time you were sending picture messages to the defendant? Yes. Okay. Will you describe the content of these two pictures for me? Uh, they are of me in a mirror, um, you know, exposing my back. Is it exposing below your back as well? There's one picture where it, it uh, is a little bit suggestive. It's showing your buttocks. Yeah. And in the other one, you're, it's not showing your chest area, but you are shirtless. Um, well, I'm... My my back is exposed. I okay. I can't quite say to tell you the truth. I think I think I had a dress that had like a sheer back to it. Okay, and and then the, a number of these other pictures, it's your exposed back. Mm hmm Okay, and again the date on on the, these two is what? That's four twelve of two thousand seven. Thank you. Mm hmm I want to go back to um, the, the nanny issue. When exactly were you hired? Uh, I believe it was somewhere around the 20th. Of April? I believe so. Okay. Did, um, how did you interview for the position? I came to, uh, I came to the house and um, Damien and Vanessa Damien's girlfriend and the younger children were there, and um, I 
told them who I was and my background in nursing and um, that sort of thing. I just kind of gave them an idea of who I was. Did uh, the defendant tell you if there were other candidates to be interviewed? He didn't tell me. Did he tell you if anyone else was interviewed? I, I don't recall that conversation. Did he tell you that you were going to be getting the job? He didn't tell me that. And after you were hired, the defendant took you around to different people handing out thank you gifts and introducing you, correct? Introducing me was a side subject. It was to thank them for the, their support during his bad time. Okay, but in the process of giving gifts, you were with him and he would introduce who you were? I was with everyone. The children were there. Okay, and how did he introduce you? Uh, I believe he introduced me as the nanny. And what name did he use? Julian. And the two of you resumed your sexual relationship when you were moved into the home as the nanny? Yes. And the two of you were hiding the fact that you were sexually involved from the children? Yes. If I told you that others have testified that you were not much of a nanny in terms of cooking, cleaning, and taking care of the children, and were just staring goo-eyed at the defendant, what would be your response? My response is that when the adult children were home, I deferred to them and went back to studying my nursing. Um, I did actually help with the children. Um, in early May, the two of you began to take trips, didn't you? You and the defendant. May of 2007? Correct. I believe we went to Wyoming to visit my family. Okay. Did the two of you leave together? I don't remember. I don't remember if we left together or separate. Okay. But you were still in a relationship. Yes. And you may have left separately so that you didn't send the appearance of being together. Isn't that true? It's possible. So when you were going to Wyoming with the defendant who was taking care of the children... I, I, I don't remember. I think maybe they, uh, maybe Alexis or one of the daughters. Okay. I truthfully don't re recall the details. So you were you were brought in to help take care of the children, but then you would go on the weekend with the defendant to Wyoming on occasion. I yeah, on occasion. Um, in May, you began receiving emails. Uh, I love you emails, that kind of thing from the defendant, correct? I, I don't remember the email specifically. I remember the texts and that sort of thing. Were you exchanging terms of endearment and text? I expect so, yeah. I love you, I miss you, I wish you were here, were here at work, that kind of thing? Probably. Okay. In June of 2007, you began looking at wedding rings, didn't you? I'm sorry, what month? June of 2007. Um, um, June or July. Are you familiar with a company known as Bids.com? I am. What company is that? Uh, it's an online company where they post things that they want to sell, and it's similar to eBay where you make bids on what you're interested in. Were you making bids on wedding rings? Uh, Martin and I were. Okay. Previously, you have said that your email address was Phoenix Sheba, correct? Yes, that was one of them. You see this right here? What is the date of this bids best picks email? This? Yeah. June 26th. Okay, and this one? June 28th. Okay. Jared, can I see this? And you had, in fact, emailed for 
an astrological wedding date. Isn't that true? I don't remember that. Okay. I, astrology has interested me in the past. Sure. So you were, you were looking for a date that would be appropriate astrologically between you and the defendant? I suppose. I don't remember the specifics, but astrology and different things has interested me. Okay, would you look at this one? Do you oh. remember this email? I, I don't specifically, but I see it here. So. And what is it regarding? It says regarding astrology wedding date questionnaire. And when was that? Thursday, June 28th. Okay. You and the defendant went to Wyoming in early July of 2007, correct? I believe so. Sounds and about the right. defendant proposed to you officially. Okay. Is that correct? I believe so. It's been so long. This, you don't remember this, him proposing to you? This relationship has been over a very long time. I do remember him proposing. Sorry. And, and where was that at? It was in Wyoming. It was at a restaurant. Nice restaurant. Yeah. And he gave you... A ring at this point, or did the ring come later? Um, I think he did give me a ring at that time. But you were later given a pretty nice ring, correct? Maybe. I I don't rec I truthfully do not recall the details. I when things okay. happened, I know there was a ring. I know I was given the ring. I don't remember which location it happened. Since the defendant proposed to you? Yes. Okay. Um, the, the, the engagement ring that you received at some point from the defendant, whether it was the day he proposed to you in July in Wyoming or it was another day, what kind of a ring was this? It was a diamond ring. How big? How big? Carrot? Yeah. Uh, it was four and a half carats. Remember the cost of that ring? Uh, it was around 7000 and um, the defendant told, did you hear the defendant tell his children about the marriage, the impending marriage? I think I heard that he had told them. From him? I, I, I believe he said that he had, he had sent them a message that that was the case. That you guys were getting married. Something like that. And, and that you were getting married in the temple. I don't, I, I don't know what he told his children. Uh, overruled, she says she doesn't know. Had you previously been married in the temple? Yes. So if the two of you, you and the defendant, were to be married in the temple, would that be possible? I'm going to object, Your Honor, as to relevance of this. It's, it's impeachment at this point, Your Honor. How is it relevant? Well, it's relevant because if she had previously been married in the temple, she would have had to move to cancel that temple marriage. And if she and the defendant were serious about their marriage, then she would have taken that step. We did. There's no question pending before you. Uh, I'm go Anything else? Well, we're trying to demonstrate clearly the significance and the depth of this relationship at this point, Your Honor going to sustain the objection, the importance is the, is the marriage plan, not where it was going to happen. Go ahead. So in terms of the marriage plan, the two of you were very serious about getting married? I believe so. Your Honor, could we approach? Yes, go ahead. Ever officially married, though? No. Despite not being officially married, you still held yourself out as Jillian McNeil? Yes. The wife of the defendant? Yes. Okay. You recognize that? Yes. What is it? 
It's an application for an identification card. And who filled this application out? Um, Martin filled it out. And how was how did that happen? I was out in the car and I told him to go in there and make arrangements and if that was approved then I would come in and sign it. So he set out the filling out of this application? He filled out the information. Okay. And what was the purpose of this application? It was to give me access to the, the military base with him. To get you an ID for that, correct? Yes. And what name was, was used for you? Jillian G. McNeil. And did you hold yourself out as married to someone? Yes. Married to whom? Martin McNeil. And did you have a marriage date on this? The marriage date is listed as April 14th. Of what year? 2007. What is the significance of April 14th of 2007? That is the day of the funeral. Of whose funeral? Michelle's. And the defendant filled this form out, and you signed it and filed it with that entity? Yes. Move to offer Exhibit 41, Your Honor. I had an objection to that, Your Honor. Uh, stated at the bench conference, correct? Yes. Uh, the objection is overruled. The document will be received. Ms. Willis, we've discussed a number of things in the last couple of days. The two of you go on trips together, you're texting, you're texting a lot, you're sending picture messages, defendant moves you into a house in Lehigh, you're having sex more, he gives you a discretionary card, helps pay for your schooling, you communicate a lot, you tell a potential suitor your relationship is much more than that. Um, Michelle dies, you go to the funeral, you talk to him at the funeral, you text him at the Objection, funeral. Objection, Your Honor, he's just testifying here. Sustained. Is there a question here? In light of all this information, are you, are you telling us you don't know anything more about Michelle's death? That is correct. Your Honor, I'd like to publish states exhibits 39, 40, and 43. Here or? With the jury. Very well. And I'll tender the witness. Hi. Could um, you, I'm sorry, why don't, um, give them some yeah, time. let's just give them a few minutes. Why don't you take a few minutes to look those documents over as soon as you're done, cross-examination will commence.
Um, you got a deal from the prosecution to testify <clears throat> here today? I did. And the deal was that if you testified, you wouldn't have to spend three years in prison? That's correct. And that case that they're talking about had nothing uh, to do with the death of Michelle, did it? No. And part of your deal with the prosecution is that you were required to testify truthfully in, this, in these proceedings? That's true. And if you didn't testify truthfully, you will, ha you will have breached that part of your deal with them? Yes. And you will be looking at spending three years in prison? Yes. You also know that if you testify falsely, you could be charged with perjury? Yes. And spend up to 15 years in the Utah State Prison? Yes. And you were told that by Doug Whitney? That's correct. And Doug Whitney is an investigator with the Utah County Attorney's Office? Yes. So you have a lot to lose if you do not testify truthfully today, right? Yes. And did you testify truthfully last Friday? Yes. And today? Yes. So you testified <clears throat> truthfully for the prosecution? Yes. And you will testify truthfully when I ask you questions as well? Yes. Did you ever use Yahoo Messenger when communicating with Martin? Yes, frequently. Okay, can you tell the jury what Yahoo Messenger is? Yahoo Messenger um, was available through the Yahoo site. You could type on your computer and it would send as if it were, I mean, it would send to someone's phone as a text message. Okay, so if there were texts from Yahoo Messenger in those phone records, those would be from you? Yes. Now, we don't have the content of those texts, correct? Correct. Those weren't able to be recovered? I have no knowledge of them. Is it fair to say that Martin never talked to you about leaving Michelle? No. For you? And he certainly never talked to you about Objection harming here, Michelle? Uh, sustained. It's a statement of the defendant not offered against him. Um, you also, there were also phone records in July of 2007 yes. that you reviewed? Yes. Okay, and you went uh, over those texts? I did. And do you recall going over the texts of July 8, 2007? Yes. Okay, and you texted 131 texts just on that day alone? Yes. And July 9th of 2007? Yes. And you texted 76 times with Martin on that day? Correct. Okay. And this is when you were living with Martin? Yes. Okay. And so you were with him at night and things like that? I was. So would you say that you were a big texter? Very big texter. Okay. In January of 2000, and seven, February 2007, March 2007, April of 2007. What are the generally the total texts that you would text during those months? Uh, uh, total? Yes. In the neighborhood of two or three thousand texts. I text everybody. I preferred text to phone call. And who were some of the other people you would text? Some of your girlfriends? Yes, some of my girlfriends. Uh, Miranda. Marinda? Marinda. Holly? Yes. Erica? Teresa? Celeste. Celeste. And other people as well? That's correct. Okay. I have one moment, Your Honor. That's all I have, Your Honor. Do you have cross exam or uh, redirect? Very go. Very well. Go ahead. Ms. Willis. <clears throat> You have previously testified to being convicted of felonies. This is true. And um, Ms. Gustin clarified that those had nothing to do with the homicide or alleged homicide of Michelle McNeil in this case. Um, but those were crimes of, of a fraudulent nature, some of them. Yes. Is that correct? Deceit, misrepresentation? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anything further? Nothing further. 
May this witness be released from her subpoena or questions from the jury, but we would ask that she remain on her subpoena until the conclusion of the trial. Very good. Do you have questions of this witness? You'll pass them to the end of the row, please. To begin with, I'll, I'll ask this question. It's just a yes or no question to begin with. Was there a, a reason that that it was decided that you would be introduced at the temple to a family matter, member instead of just introducing you at the nanny interview? Yes or no, was there a reason for that? Yes. And who gave you that reason? Martin thought it would be a good idea to meet someplace nice, quiet, soothing. Did you have previous experience as a nanny prior to working as a nanny for the McNeil children? No. What did Martin tell you that led you to believe that your relationship had become much more? He didn't tell me anything. It was the fact that he was helping me through school that made it more of a of a um, circumstance. I was very busy and I was seeing a little more of him. Did Martin ever discuss Michelle's health or surgery with you? No. Um, I overheard a conversation where um, she had had a, a high blood pressure that day and he said it needed to be controlled before surgery, but that was, that was the extent of what I knew. Do you have follow-up questions from the state? I do, Your Honor. Go ahead. <coughs> but before the surgery, you were aware that it was going to be taking place? Yes. And that when it had taken place, that it had taken place? Yes. Ms. Gustin asked you about um, going to prison and such. Um, <laughs> Your Honor, this is outside the scope of the jury questions. I'll allow him uh, to reopen and you may re-examine. Um, going to prison wasn't necessarily a certainty. That was a potential consequence, correct? Yes. And so it would have been based upon your sentencing in general, not just because you didn't cooperate in this investigation, correct? Would you please restate that? What I'm getting at is you would have been sentenced based upon a lot of factors and not because you didn't cooperate in this investigation, correct? Um, a lot of factors. I have cooperated every time I've been in sure. any situation. And I'm not situation. suggesting otherwise. Okay. What I'm saying is that in your state cases, you were given no jail time, correct? That is correct. And in other cases, you were given a significant time period to serve, correct? Yes. And in this case, if you hadn't cooperated, you would have been sentenced like any other defendant, probably. Probably. And that doesn't necessarily Objection, mean... Objection, speculation. Sustained. Oh, I'll, that's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. You may examine on the jury questions and any additional scope raised by the state. Um, you haven't been trained as a nanny, but isn't that correct? That I have not been trained as a nanny. Okay. I had a child of my own. All right. Tell me what you did with uh, the children. What were your nanny duties? I would get up, make sure they were getting ready for school, um, getting breakfast. I'd take them to school. I would go to my nursing classes. Um, I would come back. I would, I would take them to dance. We could stop at the grocery. Um, I'd help with dinner if Martin wasn't cooking help them make dinner sometimes. Okay. So you were going to nursing school, so you were busy during this time as well? I was. Okay. But you were doing something? Yes. That's all I have, Your Honor. Nothing further, Your Honor. As previously stated, we 
don't anticipate bringing her back, but we'd like her to remain under subpoena. Ms. Willis, you will remain under your trial subpoena until the conclusion of the trial. If you're needed, you'll be notified to come back to court. You may step down today. Thank you. Who recalls Gypsy Willis? Good morning. Good morning. For the record, will you restate your name and spell your last name? Gypsy Jill Willis, last name Willis, W-I-L-L-I-S. Ms. Willis, we've been moving chronologically through this case, so I'm going to go back to the point where we ended with you previously. Okay. And I think we stopped around the time that the defendant proposed to you in Wyoming. Okay. Do you remember talking about that? Yes. Um, and I asked you, I believe, if the two of you ended up getting married. And what was your answer to that? We did not get married. Did, um, what happened with your relationship in the around that time? My re um, around the time that we were engaged? Uh-huh. It just continued as it had been. Okay, so you continued living together? Yes. You continued holding yourself out as husband and wife? I believe so. Did you get a marriage license? We did get a marriage license. We didn't actually get married, though. Okay. Um, let's move ahead a little bit to the, um, to the year 2008. In 2008, did the two of you continue to live together? Yes. And you continued to hold yourself out as husband and wife? Yes. And you also held yourself out as Jillian McNeil? Yes. And we have an exhibit wherein you applied for um, uh, a mil military ID with that name? Yes. Based on direction from defendant. Is that correct? That is correct. I'm sorry. Um, let's move to the year 2009. At the beginning of the year 2009, the two of you continued to live together. Uh, yes. I mean, very shortly after 2009, we okay. were we were indicted and separated. And you were arrested, correct? Well, yeah. Okay. And when you were arrested, um, you were taken into federal custody, and later you pleaded guilty, and you were sentenced by Judge Benson. Is that correct? That's correct. Do you remember your sentencing with Judge Benson? A little, yeah. It's been a long time. Okay. Do you remember uh, what you said to Judge Benson as it related to your relationship with the defendant? I said that we had ended our relationship. Was that true? It's true. I had not had any contact with him since I had been arrested. Okay, but was your relationship really over? At that point, it was. We had no contact. There was no anticipated contact. So you didn't have a relationship after that? After that, he wrote to me while I was in jail, yes. Okay, so he wrote to you? Well, we wrote back and forth, yes. And you wrote to him? Yeah. And you referred to each other with terms of endearment and such? Prison is a Sweetie, very lonely love. place. Well, the, the question is, you, you, you would call each other terms of endearment, correct? Uh, yes. Your Honor, I'd ask for permission to move about the courtroom as it relates to exhibits with this witness. Well, you, may, you may approach. Go ahead. <coughs> You may. Um, do you recognize this? Uh, yes. And what is it? This is a letter that Martin wrote to me, I believe. It's got his handwriting. Okay. And what was the date on that? This was October 1st of 2009. Okay. Um, do you remember the date that you were sentenced by Judge Benson? I think it was the 1st of September. Okay, so this was after that? Yes. Okay. Um, and how does he address it to you? Dear sweetheart. Dear sweetheart. And what does he say in that line right there? Um, I have informed them here that you are my common law wife. Okay, so here he's telling you that he's told other officials that you are his common law wife. Yeah. And didn't he send you an affidavit to hold yourself out as his common law wife? Yeah, he did. Okay. We've been living together for a couple of years. Sure. And and you held each other out as husband and wife. Yes. So this was in line with that. 
Yeah. Correct. Um, and he told you that you put money on your books, correct? Um, that he has not put money on your books. Okay, but he did end up putting money on your books, correct? Um, At different yeah, times. Yeah. Will you read this line he wrote to you right there? Um, yes. sure. Same letter? Yes. The only reason I do anything is because I want to be as good as I can be when I get out of here so you will still feel the same about me. And will you read this line as well? I love you and miss you more than you can imagine. Okay, so he's continuing to say that you guys are going to have a relationship later, correct? He's saying he wants to. Okay. Certainly. Was that reciprocated by you? At the time, I had lost most of my friends and all of my family. I, I wanted to be in contact with anyone I could be, yes. And, and you did reciprocate his feelings? I did. Okay. I want him to write it back to me. Um, do you recognize this one? Um, yeah, it's in, in his handwriting, October 9th. Okay, so this is a week after, just over a week after the last one. Will you read that first part? Dearest love, today I received your letter of October 4th and was thrilled to hear from you. It was the first letter or direct communication in nine months. And even though I was always glad, Well, that's fine, right? Now. Okay. So, in, in other words, he had received a letter from you. The first letter in nine months, yes. Uh -huh. And he was happy to receive that from you. He was. And in that letter, you didn't tell him <clears throat> that your relationship was over like you had told Judge Benson, correct? I don't remember. Will you read um, this one? Just this excerpt. I don't see a date yeah, or anything. Just, we're in the same letter. Um, do you now think that you want to settle here? I don't mind settling in Texas or anywhere else you might want. If Texas, what city? Okay, so he's talking about future plans with you here, correct? I, I mean, maybe. I've, he says he has some questions for me. It's. I mean, it's been a long time. Sure, I understand. Do you, you recognize these letters, though, correct? I, I recognize the handwriting. The Do you specifics. still have these letters? I, I don't know if I have this one. I have some. You've saved letters? I have them in a box in the okay. garage. So you, okay. <laughs> that was my question. You saved some of these letters? I, I've saved everything from Texas, yeah. Okay. Oops. What does he say right here? I love you, sweetheart, and we'll write again soon. Okay, moving on. Tell us, uh, is this his handwriting again? Yes. And what date is this? November 3rd, 2009. And how is it addressed to you? Dearest love. Okay. Thank you. You know, this was two years after she passed away. I don't... Um, I'll ask questions, thanks. Um, will you read this for me, please? I weighed myself and found that I had gained weight in jail. I was surprised but not shocked. So again, um, I'm dieting and exercising so you will not, so you will not have to, ex uh, you don't, you will not have to expect a hefty husband when this is over. Again, alluding to future plans. Is that a question? I need yes. an answer. Uh, yes. Okay. Will you read this? Thank one? you. Will you read that? I wish I could sleep for the next twenty months and do nothing but dream of being with you. I love you with all of my heart and think of nothing but a future with the two of us, never to be separated again.
Here's another one. What's the date on this one? Um, November 9th, 2009. And how is it addressed? Dearest love. Okay. Um, I'm not going to ask you to read this out loud, but will you just review this paragraph for me? Okay. Um, and it, what is he talking about to you in that paragraph? He's talking about a vehicle. And about giving you this car and that the car is yours, correct? He said the car is mine, yeah. Okay. It really is a combination of small things that makes me realize how much I miss you and how much I love you. With this one, I also don't want you to read this out loud, but just read this paragraph and then I'll ask you about it. Okay, so in that paragraph, he's explaining to you that He's putting money on your books, correct? Yes. And he did, in fact, do that? I, yes. Read that one. Know that I love you and have loved you from the day we met. I will work hard to keep your love for me. So he said he loved you from the day he met you, correct? Yes. Uh, November 12, 2009. Okay, will you read that highlighted portion? Yeah. Dearest one, your letter arrived today and I was um, so damn happy to hear from you. I have waited every day since I heard it was coming on pins and needles. It was all that I hoped for and what I needed. Okay. Do you remember the content of your letters to the defendant around this time? Basic content, maybe. Did you ever tell him it was over, the relationship was over in any of those letters? I was so lonely. I was thrilled out of my mind to get a letter. Okay, I, I can understand that, but my question is, did you ever tell him it was over? I did not. Okay. Um, you don't have to read this out loud, but again, he's talking to you about putting money on your books, correct? Yes. Would you read the highlighted portion there? And it actually goes in to this page. As far as giving up on you, how silly. I thought you had given up on me. Remember, I love you more than... Remember, I love you more than you love me. As far as common law marriage, why don't we just get married for real? Um, that's fine. You, okay. That's fine. Thank you. So, sorry. based on this, he's answering your query as to giving up on him, correct? Um, as far as me giving up on you, how silly. Yes. You were concerned he might give up on you. I must have made a comment to that effect. that one at the bottom. Stop worrying about anything to do with me abandoning you. It is not going to happen. I love you and miss you every minute. can think of nothing but how wonderful you are. Okay, this one's a little harder to read, but can you 
tell who that is from? Looks like Martin's letter. And what's the date on that? Uh, November 14th, 2008. Okay. And that date is probably wrong, correct? I don't know. What, what do you mean? Why is it probably wrong? Because it says 2008. Wouldn't it have oh. been 2009? Uh, unless you wrote me a letter in 2008. Let me read. Um. Yes, I think this is an incorrect it would have been date. 2009, correct? Could you read that line for me? You cannot imagine how your letters make me feel. What's the date on this letter? 11-15-2009. And this is a letter again from the defendant? Yes. Will you read that highlighted portion? You are worth everything I go through to you are worth everything I go through to get back get you back in my life. Here's the next one. What is the date on this one? November 17th, 2009. And how is it addressed? Dear sweetheart. Okay. Will you read this line right here? I have signed up for the A-plus um, computer technician course. Okay. So he told you he signed up for a computer technician course called the A-plus one? I... Okay. Yes. Your second letter was just what I needed on a day when I was more lonely than usual. Read that one. I have enclosed a common law statement that I have created. Hopefully it will do the trick. But if not, let's get married um, and shut these people up for all, once and for all. You related previously that sometimes his uh, handwriting was like Sanskrit. Yeah, I did. So sometimes it's hard to read. <laughs> it is. But this is talking about a common law marriage statement, correct? Yes. another one. And again, how is this addressed? Dearest Love. And what's the date? November 24th, 2009. Okay, I'm not going to have you read that line. Out loud. I'm just going to have you read it to yourself, okay? Okay. What is... What is in this statement, the defendant is telling you that whatever he has is yours, too. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. You recognize this, Ms. Willis? Yes. And what is that? This is an envelope uh, from me to Carol Smith. And who is Carol Smith? Carol Smith is uh, a person that would forward my letters to Martin. So she was kind of a go-between so that you could write the defendant, correct? Correct. Okay. And this is, in fact, a letter you wrote him, correct? I believe so. And how did you address him? Love. From, at, from that word right there to here for me. 
Not out loud. You can read it to yourself. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Do you understand the context of what you're saying here? Yes. Okay. And will you read this line that's highlighted? Correct. We can worry it. We can worry about it all later or closer to when I see you. Okay. So you're talking about future plans together, correct? Yes. And here you remark, you are so sweet to send me money, acknowledging the money he sent you. Yes. I want you to read this line out loud. Just a moment. said, babe, be very careful with what you describe in your mail. You told him to be very careful about what he says in his mail, correct? Because I didn't want to have any well, problem just, with the I'm just asking yes or no. prison. Yes. You read this line right there. I hope you know that I love you and I think about you all the time. Okay. So this is the reciprocity I was asking you about. You were not telling the defendant it was over. You were... I was encouraging the mail, yes. Yeah. I was lonely, and it was wonderful to have some kind of support. And here again you say, know that I love you. Yes. This is the line where you say, I'm happy to get your letters even in Sanskrit. Yes. Commenting on his handwriting, I guess. You also say, I, I worry about you all the time. I did. And you did worry. Correct? It's a scary place. Here you say, I would not have changed the fact that you and I were together. I would not change the fact that you and I were together and I continue, but certainly all else. Okay. Will you read this line right here? Do not fear my loss, not ever. I have always loved you and always will. I think of you all the time. I'm not going to ask you to read this out loud, but will you look at, just read this part right here and get an understanding of that context? Okay. It was a quote from a book. Okay, you quoted a book there, correct? Yes. Will you read the quote that you sent to him that I've highlighted here? I know that I could better abandon friends, country, everything, than live without you. I could change my name and live in the remotest part of Europe, in poverty or, or obscurity. I could bear that very well, but to be parted with you, I cannot bear. Okay. And you signed it how? Love you, your girl. Your girl, correct. And what was the date of this letter that you wrote? January 13th, 2010. After you wrote this letter, you were interviewed by Detectives Robinson and Whitney, were you not? I believe so. In Texas. Mm -hmm. And that interview took place on or about October 11th of 2010? Yes. <clears throat> you don't have to read this out loud, but please read this, and you can look to the page before if you need to to understand what's going on here. Okay, and in relation, or in regard to your relationship with the defendant when you were interviewed by the detectives on this date, mm -hmm. again, this date took place after your letter, correct? What did you tell them about your relationship with the defendant? Can I stop you for just a minute, counsel? We approach, are you counsel for Ms. Willis?
the record in the matter of State of Utah versus Martin McNeil, he is present with his counsel. The state's attorneys are also present. Ms. Willis is on the stand. We are outside the presence of the jury. Ms. Willis, can I have you step down come to the podium with your legal counsel? Counsel, would you state your appearance for the record? John Easton with Ms. Willis. Thank you. Ms. Willis, you have a Fifth Amendment privilege not to incriminate yourself. You have legal counsel that has advised you about that privilege. Is that correct? That is correct. Well, counsel can give you advice about that privilege. Whether you choose to exercise it must be your own decision. It's anticipated that on, cross, on direct examination, you will be asked whether or not you gave false information to a police officer in the context of a criminal investigation. The answer to that question may give rise to criminal liability. If you are asked that question, do you intend to exercise your Fifth Amendment privilege or not? No. You will not exercise the privilege? No. You intend to give answers to the question? Yes. Is this an issue of uh, immunity? I think from a technical point of view, she would invoke, but we were granting her a very limited use immunity today. Okay. Sense, Counsel, does she intend to exercise the privilege? Judge, her intention is to testify truthfully. Her intention was to cooperate uh, with all aspects of the investigation and testify truthfully. The state has granted her use immunity uh, regarding prosecution for any false statement she made in the interview in October 2010, the interview conducted at the Texas prison. We have accepted that, and our intention is to testify and go forward with direct examination. Very good. Uh, has the immunity agreement been reduced to writing? It has. Have you received a copy? We have received an original. I'd like to make that a part of the record in this case as well. You may. Is there anything further today? Very good. If you'll retake the witness stand, let's have the jury in. Uh, October 11, 2010. Um, and I ask you to read this section. And um, do you remember this? Yes. And isn't it true that you told investigators that you could not see yourself being with Martin any further, and the idea of being with him terrified you. I found myself in prison for two years as a result of being with this guy, and that was terrifying to me. Um, okay, I'm going to move on. Okay. Um, but you did say, you did say that prior to all of this, the two of you had every intention of being together and marrying and such. Yes. And this was October 11th of 2010, correct? Yes. Okay. And uh, here's another letter. Will you tell us the date on that? October 25th, 2010. Okay, and how is it uh, written to you? My love. And who wrote it? Martin. Okay. And this was after the interview, correct? Yes. Let me read that line. Most of my thoughts are still directed toward our future together. last letter. This is, hey, look at this one. What's the date on this one? It's October 8th, or excuse me, November 8th, 2010. And how is it addressed? Dear one. And who is the dear one? I am. And it's written by whom? Martin. Okay. You read that line? I received a letter from you on Friday that was written on October 17th. Fair to say October 17th comes after October 10th. That's correct. So you wrote him a letter after your interview with authorities, correct? That's correct. After the interview where you said the relationship was basically over. The relationship was over after prison, after jail. I needed his support during that time. I'd never had anything but a speeding ticket up to that point, and I was terrified. Will you read this line for me? Um... I would like to buy one and have one in our home library. Do you know what he's talking about here? Uh, 
it says this prior to that it says this is the only book I've read here that I would like to have and buy for the home library okay so he's he's read a lot of books right yes and, and share that with you and here he says he would like to have it in our home library intimating a future with you yes right? You read that line. I would love to take you back to Rome and then travel throughout the rest of Italy. Okay, thank you. So by saying he received your letter at this, is it fair to say that in that letter you didn't tell him things were over and you were still communicating to each other in terms of endearment and such? We did until I was out of jail, yes. I think it was in February of um, 2011. Okay. And um, after you were released, you still received some benefits from the defendant, correct? No. You didn't drive a car? That was, well, I wouldn't say that was from him. Was it that was, that was, from, my pre that was from, from my previous life there. Okay, and, and you, you got this car back after you got out? Yes. What kind of a car was this? It was a BMW. I'm going to take you back a little bit. There are a couple of things I want to follow up with on uh, your earlier testimony. Um, isn't it true that in March of 2007, you were made aware that Michelle was going to have surgery? I believe so, yeah. You remember that? Um, what day did you find out that Michelle died? I found out on the 11th in the afternoon. April 11th of 2007. And how did you find that out? From a text. <coughs> From whom? Objection, Your Honor. This has been asked and answered. Um, overruled, she may answer. A text from whom? From Martin. Okay. And then, <clears throat> and it's, it's true that after that, you took pictures of yourself and sent them to him on the 12th. I guess so. I, it's been too long, but we've seen that evidence. Ms. Willis, isn't it fair to say that you appear to be minimizing your relationship with the defendant? I don't believe so. me asking you a question about a bunch of facts and then I asked you if you knew um, anything else about Michelle's death and your answer was no correct I don't, I don't rem Maybe remember that the was specific a poorly phrased question I brought up a bunch of things that were all kind of lined up with each other and I said are you telling us you don't know anything else about Michelle's death and you said yeah I don't know anything else right you have been lining up facts this whole trial. I'm not sure which time you refer to. Can you refresh my memory? Okay. Well, let me, I'll move on from that, but. Fair to say you are protective of Martin? Martin and I have not been in a relationship for years and years. I. Your Honor, I'm going to move to strike. It's not responsive. Uh, it's a yes or no question. The no. motion to strike is granted. The answer is no. The answer is no. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. You may cross. <coughs> uh, Ms. Willis, I just have a few questions. Um, do you intend to have a relationship with Martin in the future? No. Okay, and um, how long has your relationship been over with him? Uh, I haven't spoken to him in four and a half years on the phone. I saw him twice in court in the last four and a half years. Okay, have you continued writing letters to him? Not since I was released from jail. You're receiving letters from him? No. Are you in a, another relationship at this time? Yes. 
Um, the prosecutor brought up these pictures, and he showed you a bunch of pictures of yourself. Yes. Um, there were more. There were four pictures sent on April 11th. Isn't that correct? I believe. April 12th, 2007. I, I believe so. Okay, but there were more created than were sent on that day. And the prosecutor just sent you pictures that were created on April 12th, 2007. Correct. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? They were created on that date, but they weren't necessarily sent on that date. I think that is true. Okay. And none of these pictures um, showed your breasts? No. They were mostly just of your face? That's correct. And then there was one picture of your back, correct? Yes. And you're not sure that you even sent that picture of your back on April 12th, Objection, 2007? Uh, overruled. I, I don't have any idea when these pictures were sent. I remember taking them. I remember seeing them. I don't specifically remember sending them that day. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Any redirect? I have no redirect, Your Honor. Any questions for this witness, if you would pass them to the end of the row? You and the defendant obtained the marriage license. Um, it was in the summer of 2007, I had approximately the end of July, August, July, yeah. beginning of August. I'm sorry. Do you have follow-up questions? Yes, sir. You may. You recognize Yes. And so what day was it? That was the end of July, 20th day of July, 2007. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. You may step down. Your Honor, we, we don't uh, oppose her being released from her subpoena at this point. Any objection? You will be released from your trial subpoena. Thank you.